Okay, here's strong talk. Uh, this window right here is the strong talk system documentation, which is done using a, a rich editor that's suitable for live literate programming. So as you can see, it includes buttons, uh, like this button, for example. If we click on it, we get the source for this same window. Let's zoom in on it. And you can see it's sort of an HTML variant. This isn't quite reach real HTML. It's a very small subset, circa mid-90s, uh, interpreted by Smalltalk. But it does have this useful tag called the Smaplet, a Smalltalk applet, for those who remember Java applets. And that lets you include Smalltalk source code. And that source code will execute. Uh, it will produce, in, in this case, it produces a, a button. And that button has a behavior, which uh, happens to be opening the source for the document itself. So that's uh, certainly one way to do things. Uh, if we zoom out, we can see that there are other, perhaps more useful things we can do. Uh, we have here widgets that uh, belong to the StrongTalk IDE. So if we expand one of these guys, this is a class hierarchy browser, and it expands in place. And we can keep, uh, let's see if we can make it bigger. Here, we can keep following this to whatever level we want. Uh, when we reach what we want, we might click on a class, and that opens a class browser. So that's one example of, of embedding live widgets within the document and creating them. Uh, using this format that we saw before, uh, the you know using some sort of markup language, and you can imagine doing this with HTML or Markdown or something else, and we'll have more to say about that later. Now, in contrast, here's the class ordered collection, and if you open the comment section in the class browser, you'll see there's a button here. Now, this is regular text, right? We can type so we can type around the button uh, we can go and you know format add lines remove lines uh, etc we can go and delete stuff and we can even delete the button but we won't do that before we use it in this case it simply brings up the the license, the open source license for uh, the code, uh, and it's embedded in the class comment in a sensible place. Uh, we had to do that uh, when we open source strong talk because, uh, well, Sun's lawyers made me do it. But we can also erase the button, right? It's a regular widget in a regular WYSIWYG text editor. So that's uh, that's a nice thing, but. There's also the question of how we introduce these widgets, how we add them, given that we're not using markup. And you can imagine different ways. You can imagine drag and drop and things like that. Uh, one particular way of interest here, uh, if we go here in, in uh, essentially a workspace, we can select some text that actually is executable code. And we have this menu option to build a do it button that transforms the text into a button and that button will execute the code that was given by the text so in this case if we click on this we get an inspector on an ordered collection and we can we can use these buttons in in every context where we can actually uh, execute code so for example, if we go here inside the object inspector for this ordered collection, we can again build a do it button. And when we press it, we add three to the collection. So we can keep pressing and it keeps growing. And it's still a button that we can edit around and so forth, right? So this is, this is kind of uh, the model that we'd expect that every text editor allows us to introduce you know, live widgets with live code that we can interact with. Now, uh, there are some issues 
uh, with the model that we have here. It's still uh, not everything that we'd like to have. And these issues have less to do with the editing, the, the, the literate aspect of embedding live widgets and so forth inside of uh, rich text, which we do support. Uh, but what they uh, wanted to illustrate what problems we might have uh, with liveness. So this is an instance method, and I'm going to select this comment and turn it into a do it button. And I can click on it. Uh-oh, get a debugger. Uh, the problem here basically is that self isn't bound, right? We're in an instance method. This expression uses self, uh, the equivalent of this in, in more mundane languages. And uh, there isn't a binding for it because really in small talk, the text in class browsers is actually dead. You can evaluate things up to a point if they're in global scope, but if you evaluate stuff that pertains to a method like uh, that depends on the bindings of instance variables of self or of formal parameters, then it's not going to work. Uh, basically, these these things do not have bound bindings because we're not in the context of a particular object. Uh, we're just talking of the, about the text of the, the program in the abstract, just as we are with uh, you know a Fortran program. So it's dead, and that's a problem. And this is something we'd like to address because really what you want to do with these things is, is evaluate things like this, like the actual expressions that are in, in the real code, and that won't work. This relies on self, this relies on E, which is a formal parameter which we don't have a binding for. So this is a problem that uh, we need to address, and uh, in a few minutes I'll show you a demo that does uh, address all this.